The iPhone 13 is an inflection point for repair shops and DIY repair. Some say it's a reckoning, that we should all be prepared to move around ever smaller chips to work around increasingly locked down devices. Others say this is the only way to have truly secure devices. We think it's the strongest case for the right to repair yet. All this because of a chip smaller than your fingernail. Here's the situation. If you replace a screen on an iPhone 13 without transferring this small chip over from the original screen to the new one, or without approving the swap with Apple's proprietary software, Face ID will stop working. We first saw this on launch day with our teardown devices, but we recently confirmed this is still an issue with the newly released iOS 15.1. The only thing that changed from the release software is that there's now an official error message instead of a hidden failure. Apple has been quiet about this issue, as you might expect, but we did hear through the grapevine a while back that this issue would be fixed in an iOS update. We reached out to Apple for comment, but we've not heard back as of the publishing of this video. It's almost impossible to believe that Apple's control over iPhone parts is an accident, especially after we've seen similar issues with Touch ID, batteries, and cameras over the last few years. It is possible that this is just a series of unfortunate hardware bugs that made it through testing, and Apple just couldn't be bothered to fix them with software updates. Because again, they have the tools to pair these components with the click of a button. Among repair shops and inside repair discussion groups, there are now three paths forward. Train technicians for expensive and difficult micro soldering repairs, join Apple's authorized repair network, or find a new line of work. But there's also a fourth, the wild card. Fight like hell for right to repair, which could give repair shops access to Apple's proprietary software for repairing components, or even better, prevent companies from making anti-competitive decisions like this in the first place, accident or not. Before we filmed this video, I completely roasted two iPhone screens pulling these chips off to get some photos for our blog. Most of my micro soldering experience is the destructive kind for teardowns, and this was way more difficult for me than just pulling a chip off of a circuit board. So to learn more, I reached out to Justin Ashford from the YouTube channel, The Art of Repair, who, like some of our other repair friends, has way more experience doing this kind of board level work for customers, as well as teaching his YouTube audience. So my first question is, could you walk us through sort of like a really quick step-by-step -step procedure of how you would swap the IC from one display to another if you're doing a display repair? Okay, so so here's the deal. On the back of the display itself, you've got a little like you know a little flex cable that connects to the actual display itself and everything. And then you know right on top of it, you're going to find a little bitty sputter coated IC. It's you know it's sitting right on top there. And then there's yeah. a little bit of like epoxy coating or we call it like underfill or something under the IC. And there's kind of two trains of thought here. Okay, um, some people will want to take a full display and that already has one on there and they'll take like a either like a CNC or maybe like a like a Dremel or something like that and they'll kind of grind it away okay and when they grind it away it allows you to get down to the pads themselves without actually damaging the, the flex cable not damaging the right, flex cable yeah. itself um, and once you actually have this IC off and both of them are basically open up. Like if you have the new display and you have the flex cable sitting there and everything's good and everything, at that point, it's actually a very simple job of just re-soldering the IC on there. That's a very, very simple process. It only takes, you know, a minute or two. I would actually say that the entire process itself could be, you know, 10 or 11 minutes if you actually know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, it, it's just been, it's been an easy road for a long time for a lot of people. And this is gonna be a real big roadblock. You know, for you, you're not a hot, you're not you're not a shop level technician. You know what I'm saying? It's not your responsibility to be able to go do that the first time that you do it. You know, yeah. for you to show me that you had one with a burned OLED, I totally expect that. I totally get it. But you know, my boy Evan over here, you know what I'm saying? If if I was Evan showing him how to do, do it, that. he learned how to do it. He would never ever do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's 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 at a shop level, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. What do you think about how that impacts DIY repair? So like we always talk about the 60s or the 70s where you could just fix anything at home and all you needed was a screwdriver. And we talk about how companies don't design things for that anymore. You and what I just told you about, you can't fix what you can't see. Mm -hmm. It all comes to this. Everyone needs a microscope. And you know, here, here let's, let's, let's put it like this. If we're getting to the point where there is no way to change a screen, no way to change a battery until like a certain, like without a certain level of skills, right? 
then do it yourself. And this is like a really like sad thing to say, but do it yourself might push back a bit, right? And like that, nobody likes to talk about that stuff, but that's a real life thing. You know what I'm saying? Do it yourself yeah. repair might get a lot harder. Even if a shop has the experience and the equipment to desolder a chip and move it to a new display, they're competing with Apple and their device protection program, Apple Care, where a screen replacement costs only $30 and doesn't require any micro soldering shenanigans. For customers who want to replace an iPhone 13 screen themselves, the options are grim. You could live without Face ID or try to move the chip yourself, but you would need at least a microscope or high resolution webcam, a hot air rework station, a soldering station with a fine tip iron, tweezers, and safety glasses. Even with those tools and lots of capped on tape, it's still a challenge. You're basically performing a delicate surgery, but instead of trying not to nick an artery, you're trying not to damage the fragile OLED panel on your new screen, which sits just below that chip. Which, as you saw, I did. Twice. The crazy part about all of this is, after all this fuss, Apple could change this behavior from completely broken to a simple warning with a future software update the way they did with the iPhone 12 camera. That update took about three months to arrive after the iPhone 12 shipped. And we'll probably never know whether it was Apple intentionally testing the waters for further serialization in the future or just neglecting independent fixers. We might never get an explanation as to why, from a security standpoint, Face ID should be disabled if you replace the screen an entirely separate component. Without the right to repair, there's really nothing that can stop Apple from making micro-soldering a necessary workaround to replace even the most basic parts of a phone. With no right to repair legislation passed and companies gatekeeping their critical repair software, the current small business and DIY repair options are to get great under a microscope or give in. You can change the future though. Head to repair.org standup to learn how you can help secure your right to repair wherever you live.